I'm just gonna say this, I was a non-believer, but if the benchmarks hold water, Apple could seriously change everything. Cause see, yes, the first benchmarks from the new Apple Silicon M1 MacBook Air are out, and let's just say it blows everything out of the water. Almost everything. Some new leaks of a very credible tipster point to an S Pen finally expanding to the Galaxy S, sort of. And I suggest you don't buy the iPad mini right now, as that seems to be geared for a refresh that you're gonna want very soon. I'm Jaime Rivera, and isn't it sad when you know you can upgrade your Mac to a new version of the operating system today, but you're not sure if you wanna do it because you really wanna edit this video before that. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with deals, and this time we've got some that you might still want to get even today, and then others that I, I still honestly debate. On the list of the ones that I debate, there's the new Moto Razr 5G. I don't see a lot of people going crazy over it, and it might be the reason it dropped in price almost immediately, and you currently can find it for $9.99 on Amazon and B&H. Now, those of you wanting an even better deal, Best Buy also has it for $9.49, but that's actually after activation. But then moving on, we know that many of you are concerned with the curse of the early adopter with Apple's new M1 Max. And for you, the previous generation MacBook Air is currently $149 off, leaving the entry-level variant for $850 on Amazon. Those of you interested in iPad Pros, Amazon also has the 2020 11-inch entry-level variant for $749, or even for $849 if you go for more storage, which makes it $50 off. Finally, we have the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3 with a $61 discount, leaving the 45 millimeter variant for $369 and 339 for the 41 millimeter variant that's Bluetooth only. We've got more deals, including Hisense TVs, which are some of my favorites and others in the description. Now, as far as when it comes to official news today, if you remember, Apple has been on a roll. They've had a crazy amount of events. And of course, if you also remember the previous one, the company mentioned that Mac OS Big Sur was going to be available as a software update today and it is but you might want to think about it depending on what you do yeah those of you that rely on services like final cut pro and other apple pro services my advice is that you proceed with caution it could bring a lot of crashes in the process that said if you ordered any of the new m1 max some of us have already received notifications of shipment delivery times still appear for november 17th or 18th but if you do the math they might arrive earlier than expected for those early adopters it's great to see that there are major applications already already being upgraded for compatibility, like the case of Microsoft Office. The news went official today, but apparently universal compatibility for this new version is still in beta. Anyways, let us know in the comments if you pre-ordered any of these new M1 Macs, because obviously I did for the reviews, but then I watched TLD's recent video, and I also watched Nazi's predictions, and to be honest, now I'm regretting not ordering the higher tier variants, but we're going to discuss more about that in today's hottest segment. And how about if we continue talking about Apple, particularly with iPads, but this time for the iPad that I have been wanting to get for the longest time, and yet the reason I haven't is because I'm actually waiting for the refresh that we might finally get. I'd wait for the next one if I were you, as we're talking about some major upgrades according to a tipster, starting with the new A14 Bionic chip that powers the new iPhones and iPad Air. It seems we're getting a more modern, smaller bezel design, like in the case of the Pro, with an 8.5 inch liquid retina display, most likely the same chassis, and finally a jump to USB-C, though apparently the same speaker array that we currently have with the Mini that's not necessarily amazing. Same cameras as the iPad Air, Apple Pencil 2 support, same two batteries that aren't doing well lately, and four gigs of RAM. At this point, I can only assume that we're also getting the same Touch ID in the power button making the cut. Sadly, we still don't have timing as to when this new iPad mini is going to launch, but I'm not gonna lie, I am really excited. I have wanted a smaller form factor on an iPad mini with a better display, and obviously all the bells and whistles of the Pro, I feel that that is the best form factor, but that's just me. Now, how about if we continue with the controversial news that we discussed yesterday, where yes, Google Photos is no longer going to be free, sort of. Now it's going to be part of your current 15 gigabyte cap. Uh, and I told you that if you have a Pixel, you're perfectly fine as of June 2021, but there's a catch apparently. <laughs> 
See, it's only going to apply to current pixels. On a new report from Android Central, it seems that every other pixel in the future will be treated as a regular phone. This means that unless you have a Pixel 2 and up to the Pixel 5, anything that happens further will take up your 15 gigs of base storage, which according to Google is enough to last you for three years of memory, as if they didn't do everything with Google Drive and also your Gmail is there, like seriously. And then there's the main problem, we still have uncertainty over what's going to happen in June. We don't know if existing photos currently uploaded will be dumped into those 15 gigs and leave you without space, pretty much like iCloud sort of does. But anyways, we saw all your comments yesterday. Of course, we're outraged. This was one of the reasons I was sort of locked into the Google ecosystem. Google Photos was such a crazy good tool for lots of people. It even made the reasons for not having much storage on pixels make sense. But, uh, oh my God, this is the thing about Google. They come up with some really great ideas and then they kill them halfway through, or now where apparently they wanna make money out of them as if their quarter results weren't doing well. Now, how about if we switch gears over to Samsung and discuss one of the things that we have been waiting for Samsung to do for years. And no, I'm actually not talking about the company ditching Exynos processors. It's the other thing. Think about it, how long has it been rumored for Samsung to say goodbye to the Galaxy Note and merge it with the Galaxy S? Well, it seems that 2021 might finally be the year because we've got tipster extraordinaire Ice Universe hinting to the S Pen being supported, but there's a catch. The tweet is clear that it's only supported by the S21 Ultra and a separate tweet from Max Jambor claims that we're not even getting a silo for that S Pen to fit. So just think about the idea of having a case that might attach it magnetically, I hope. And think about it, that's actually not necessarily a bad idea because it would allow for a larger battery on the device, which could come in handy because we've got rumors of a power hungry 2K display that supports 120 Hertz. And remember, we might not be getting a charger in the box. Whatever the case may be, this doesn't necessarily mean that this is the death of the Galaxy Note. But if you remember, we also got patents for a Samsung Galaxy Z Fold three, I guess, with an S Pen, also with a silo within, and uh, maybe the case will be that that will be the next Galaxy Note, which would actually have a much better name than Z Fold 3 or whatever. We'll see what they come up with. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with Apple, Apple Silicon, the M1 chip, the MacBook Air, and benchmarks. Yes, we read your comments. We also know that you find it boring that the company didn't change the designs, I feel that's coming soon. I feel that there is a bigger picture, but we couldn't really confirm this until we got benchmarks to see exactly what we were getting here. And uh, let's just say it's crazy. See, Apple is notorious for not providing information of things like clock speeds of this new M1 chip or the kind of RAM being included. But those of you wondering just how powerful these new Macs are, let me just say I'm already regretting buying the 16 inch Pro a couple of weeks ago. The new fanless MacBook Air just went through Geekbench and it seems to blow everything out of the water, even that 16 inch MacBook Pro from 2019. It brought single core scores of 1687 and multi-core scores of 7433. To provide some context, this means that the M1 blows past all mobile Macs, Pro or non-Pro, all current Mac mini configurations and a good deal of the iMacs. That includes the late 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro with the Intel Core i9-9980HK processor clocked at 2.4 gigahertz. The funniest part is that the testing was conducted with an entry-level MacBook Air with just eight gigs of RAM running macOS 11.0.1. And if these results are true in real world use, we're not just talking about a faster computer. Think about it, this is the $1,000 entry-level fanless MacBook Air obliterating all the other Macs in the lineup. Can you imagine the MacBook Pro with the cooling system, what that one is gonna be able to do? I can't wait for my shipment. Let us know in the comments down below. Will these benchmarks start to lure you into considering Apple Silicon? Are you going to wait for the next generation variants, which will most probably bring another design? Because in my case, I'm really regretting not going for the higher tier models right now, but of course I have to wait for mine. They actually shipped. They should be here early next week. And uh, I'm, I'm crazy excited. I'm just gonna admit that I am, but obviously we can't wait to hear what you think in the comments down below. 
Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram. And follow me on my personal handles to see me. I really want to get that big sir update. But anyways, please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.